Hello everyone, it's been a while. Just for today's video, we're going to talk about the composite pattern. And for this pattern, this is a way that we can kind of simplify a way that we're trying to apply some behavior or action towards an entire collection. What that means is simplifying the code because sometimes we might have some similar action that's being applied to both maybe individual items and, and, and complete collections, maybe like a file system. Also thinking a lot about the DOM on the HTML front end, thinking about how those sorts of systems are kind of patterned around this idea of this part whole, like thinking about how we can abstract collections into this kind of tree system, like a parent child. And so we're trying to, in some way, apply some action or behavior towards both of those at the same time. And maybe we're trying to also simplify this action and system. And so I have a little bit of an example, a little bit of an explanation. And so hopefully I can kind of reiterate why we use this pattern and how we use this pattern and kind of explain more of those nuances as well. So here we go. So for this demo, we're just going to assume that in this system, we have maybe like an e-commerce site or some site that we're tracking the products of some stores. We have two different stores. We have this music store here, and we have some bookstore here. And just simply for this example, we're keeping track of every single product within the store, speakers and turntables in the music store. We can kind of control and see what the current price is. So... Maybe we'll add a new price on the speakers, like $50. And for the bookstore, we'll just do the same thing. We'll just leave it the same on 20 and 50 for the prices on the bookstore products. And then let's just increase this to maybe 2010. And we'll do 5,120 here. And then we can see the different prices here. And so as we go down here, we're keeping track of the totals of the stores, but at the same time, we're also keeping track of the prices of these individual products. And so for the composite pattern, we're also thinking about how we can apply this pattern to this example. And so we're also thinking about we want to, in the same way, keep track of the price on the total amount within the stores, but also keep track of the amount on the products themselves. And so having a deeper look, let's look at how the pattern can be applied to both of these contexts and both of these specific areas as well. So now looking exactly inside of the code, just for this e-commerce account site, we're noticing that both the individual products themselves and the stores are both implemented from this interface that we are sharing the same behavior of getting the price. And so as we instantiate both of these, we can see that for both of these, they're going to get the price in different ways. Like the product will just get the price that's from the constructor. And then the store itself is kind of keeping track of maybe a list of the products themselves and once it gets the price it's going to just get the total of all the prices that are collected and so just for this example we're also keeping track of the store itself as like um, this object here and having like an empty array for keeping track of the products but also we're keeping an array of products as well because a big key um, demonstration or key point and looking at this code is thinking about, well, why would we use this pattern as opposed to just implementing these separately? And so just looking more specifically at this function here on calculating the music store or calculating the bookstore, both of these kind of work in the same way. We notice that both of these kind of iterate in the same manner. Like we can actually use the store and get the price similarly the way that we would get it from the individual items themselves. 
But a big reason why we would do this at all is because we wouldn't have to kind of keep track of them within maybe like an array, iterating through every single object within an array. We can quickly just get this specific value or this specific behavior itself. And some reasons or some ways this is better because maybe we can implement a way we can cache um, the kind of value. We won't have to kind of go ahead and repeat maybe some behavior. And in the same manner, maybe there is like a specific way or a specific reason that we want to differentiate between the two. Maybe sometimes we want to get the total, but like in this example, maybe sometimes we want to get the price of the individual objects themselves. And so a key point in looking at this pattern is thinking a lot about that concept of maybe simplifying um, your application or your domain or your purpose in that we are using both um, a collection or an individual item repeatedly, but we're also applying maybe the same uh, kind of behavior or purpose. Like for this, we're getting the price. For another context, maybe we're getting a display. Maybe like if we're using like the document object object model, we're just using a display, or we're maybe working on a way of like reorganizing some specific context. And so, just really thinking a lot about using that collection and using the children itself, but at the same manner, we're also just applying the same sort of behavior or actions to both at the same time. So just simply, that was a lot of using this pattern. And a big part about understanding on some issues or some problems with using this pattern is thinking a lot about when we're applying the same interface or the same way that we're instantiating both kind of the parent and the child to kind of be able to use that same action or behavior, we're also overextending, overgeneralizing uh, in many ways in our application and domain. And so that can unfortunately cause some problems because we are using it in the same manner in many ways. So that can be more confusing as maybe the application or domain extends or grows. Another kind of issue is thinking a lot about safety, thinking about since we're applying the exact same, uh, in the same manner of like having the parent and child, thinking about does the parent need to have like the same functions as a child node or a child component will have? Does the child component need to have the same functions or the same behaviors as a parent. And so that's also something to consider. And also thinking a lot about maybe some other benefits. Like I talked a little bit about caching, but there's other things that you can kind of apply to this part whole relationship. Like maybe like different ways that you might want to traverse the collection. Like in the example, I just had like as an array, but maybe you overextend it to like a map or uh, a set or something like that. Um, there's always some ways that you can kind of like extend. Maybe you have like a very specific cache on every single parent node that you know that you're going to always access as you kind of like add the child components in there. And so there's also many ways that we can kind of consider improving performance in some sort of context or uh, domain as well. So yeah, that's about it. But yeah, uh, hopefully I'll make more of these videos. But yeah, if you enjoy, just comment or, you know, something like that. Okay, that's it. Bye.